Hi, and uh, welcome to another Hopper on Microcontrollers video. Um, this one's on the Raspberry Pi Pico, and this video is more about BASIC than it is about Hopper, specifically Tiny Basic, and a flavor of Tiny Basic called Gibble, which is uh, Gordon Henderson's version of Tiny Basic. And I'll have a link in the description below to the spec of his BASIC. Um, I ported his BASIC uh, from 6502 to to hopper so this basic interpreter is written in hopper and i've got the hopper virtual machine running on this pi pico um, so that's what this is um, it's a console of uh, console connection terminal connection to the pi pico serial terminal and this is the console and um, one of the commands that i've got here if you look in the bin folder Hexi is the binary for uh, Hopper, Hopper binaries. And one of the bi uh, the uh, binaries I've got is Tigger Basic, which is my flavor of um, Gordon's uh, Tiny Basic. So if we launch Tigger Basic, here we go. We're now in Gibble. <clears throat> the, there's very few differences. It's quite true to Gordon's um, flavor of uh, Tiny Basic Gibble. Um, there are only a few variations. Uh, specifically, I've got like uh, DIR load and save um, because I'm sitting on top of a real file system. So the Hopper file system sitting in the uh, built in flash of the Raspberry Pi Pico. And then um, let's load up Gordon's Mandelbrot. So load Mandelbrot. And let's run, uh, let's list that first. So Gordon has. Uh, very this tiny basic so it's very uh, terse cryptic so peek and poke so this bang symbol the exclamation mark is poke word so he's setting the time in the register this simulates where the re time uh, milliseconds register is on his 6502 so at this address poke a word of zero and then he's got this thing called top which gets you to free memory so he's saying z points to top of free memory and then he's putting a sort of a fake string in there which is these characters which he's going to use to draw the Mandelbrot and the way he accesses them is by peeking with this question mark so if you peek or poke with a question mark it's a byte if you peek or poke with an exclamation mark it's a word and then he's got this VDU instruction which puts whatever's behind it onto the screen so it's basically an array so pulling out from the start which is where Z is and an index I into the array is going to pick one of these characters and put it on the screen so if we go uh, VDU 65, which is ASCII for A, puts an A on the screen. If we go VDU 12, that's ASCII for form feed, which we interpret as clear screen, right? So, and this is an integer-based uh, Mandelbrot, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's exactly uh, his source code. Um, I don't think I've made any changes, except that I've got a fraction in the time here. So divide the time by 10 so that I can get a, um, oh, his time is, the units are peculiar. It's like hundreds of seconds instead of milliseconds, or I forget what it is, but I can get a, I can get a fractional second by doing this. So first I output the, uh, the integer part by dividing by 10. And then I, this video, uh, 46 is a, uh, period. And then after that, I take the, uh, the mod of it to get the fraction add 48 which is zero to get the fraction behind it to get the timeout anyway enough about that let's run it so there's our mandelbrot and there's the time being printed out and this is where it's been pulling um those characters so uh, you know not too shabby um let's run it again 1.2 seconds on the raspberry pi pico running at the regular clock speed uh for extra credits at the end of this video i'll um, show how easy it is to overclock in hopper on the Pi Pico, so I can get this running at least twice as fast. So um, watch the Pi Pico as I do this. The green uh, built-in LED should go on. There it is, and then off. So I use that sort of as a um, bit of diagnostic. So while the program is running, the LED is on, and then when it's finished running, it turns it off. That simple. So um, we could do our own program. We could just, just type in directly, print hello world, like that. And we've got a hello world, or we can go uh, 10 for the usual i equals 1 to 10, 1 to print uh, i equals 
on my hand. 50 minutes, stop. And win that. There we go. So this basic interpreter is tokenizing the basic into actual hopper internal uh, virtual machine instructions, which makes it pretty fast. So talking about fast, um, another example I've got is I've got the byte uh, basic benchmark um, from the 1983 uh, from a 1983 copy of Byte magazine. Um, also in Gordon's, it's all tiny basic. Gordon's tiny basic, and this is where I differ slightly from Gordon's tiny basic because it's going to have an array if top here. This array f is going to be almost 8k of elements in the array, which is quite a lot of RAM on a. I've got this running on the 6502 as well. So I made a variation on Gordon's peek and poke, and what my variation does. Instead of having, um, so it does uh, this ampersand version of the uh, poke and peak, peak and poke. Um, so that's the poke and that's the peak, if, is bitwise. So it squeezes this 8K into 1K with, uh, you know, 8 bits per byte, 8 booleans per byte. So you can make Boolean arrays a little bit smaller in this tiny basic. So um, pretty good for optimization. So let's run that. It runs the benchmark 10 times and then takes the average time. So the average time is 0.4 seconds. So 0.4 seconds for this. And then I've got um, 0.4 seconds for this. I think it was one point something. We can go get it again. Let's load. Noel's Retro Lab has also got a benchmark. Let's run that one. So bloody fast takes zero time. OK, well, that's not much use, is it? So it's much slower on basic, obviously. It's not a very good benchmark. It sort of just um, tests for loops. Um, a really good benchmark would have a, a function call in it, um, go sub and return, especially if the uh, go sub address was dynamic. In other words, the go sub address was a variable. That would be a good benchmark because you'd have to dynamically, um, you can't just compile that. You have to, at runtime, um, find a line number in, you know, so. Um, that's what nexts and go tos and stuff uh you know if they have a variable um at the end of the go to that'll make it um, harder to implement anyhow uh so what do we got we got 0.4 seconds for um the byte benchmark and let's load the mandelbrot again and let's run that so we had 1.3 seconds for the mandelbrot and 0.4 seconds for the for each iteration of the Byte magazine one. So now let's go back to the um, to the hopper console. So I end up with a path in my console when I'm in the hopper console. And let's we've got the speed um, command, and under the speed command, the default clock speed of the Raspberry Pi Pico is 133 megahertz, which is what it starts at. And your mileage may vary here. Um, I'm going to go as fast as I've managed to make it go, which might make it unreliable. Um, it depends on the voltage. Like if you've got good power supply to it, it works better. And then if you're running off a battery, you can run it much slower. I've got another video um, about overclocking the Pi Pico, specifically in Hopper, where I talk about just how, I, and I tested on four different varieties of boards, one from Adafruit, one from SparkFun, uh, one from Challenger, and one from Pi Maroni. So, if you're interested in overclocking, that's the bit of a video to watch. But let's just see about the performance we can hit, benefit we can get if we overclock and go back to Tigger Basic. So let's um, load up our Mandelbrot again. And let's run it. So this was, what did we say, 1.4, 1.3? And now it's down to 0.6. Oh, yeah, so a uh, hell of a lot faster. And I put a little bit of delay in when talking to the serial port, otherwise I end up losing characters. So as the speed gets faster and faster, the proportion of the time spent talking across the serial port um, becomes significant. So this is actually uh, being slowed down by the fact that we're printing it onto the screen. So if we did it without printing the output, it's a hell of a lot faster. Um, but yeah, what's the point if you can't see it? Okay, let's uh, try the other one, which was the Byte Magazine one, which was it was 0.4 seconds per iteration. It doesn't actually do much screen output, so let's see what it does. Exactly twice as fast. 
and it's not doing much console uh, I.O., so it's not being slowed down by the console I.O. delays. Anyhow, um, like I said, I'll put a link in the description to um, Gordon's uh, site on this, where he's got the specification of his language. Um, and a lot of credit goes to him in terms of, uh, he got me interested again in, in using Tiny Basic as an example, um, because I figured if I could make another language running on top of Hopper uh, perform way, you know, somewhat decently, and I did on the 6502, um, it's a good benchmark to try and make the Hopper virtual environment um, be high performance. So uh, for those who haven't watched any of my other videos, what is Hopper? Hopper is a, um, I can actually exit out of here and show you. Uh, let's buy out of there, exit out of there. And now I'm back on Windows where the blue shell appeared. So on the blue shell, um, I can actually uh, edit the shell we've just been running in because it's all written in Hopper, of course, because I'm in that folder right now. So this is the shell we've just been running in, uh, written in Hopper. So um you get the idea it looks a lot like c sharp or java or something like this this editor is all written in hopper it's got a debugger the debugger is written in hopper the whole tool chain the compiler um preprocessor compiler optimizer code generator and disassembler they're all written in hopper anyhow um thanks for watching and uh, i think we should end on another mandelbrot so let's do that. But we'll do one. We'll uh, uh, to get that program started again. I'm going to unplug it and, and plug it in again. So now um, we should just be able to run the terminal. And there we are. We connect it again. And so this Mandelbrot. This is the one that's written in Hopper, not in Basic. So that's point. That's point eight seconds. Eight ninety two milliseconds. Uh, let's up the speed. And run it again. And we're down to exactly half of that. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, I'll put some playlists at the end here for if you're interested, more interested in what Hop is all about. Um, and like I said, I'll put links in the description to Gordon's work on this uh, flavor of Tiny Basic Gibble.